So I have tissue, everybody, just to let you know. It's kind of hard after following that video to get started, but it's exciting. So, all right, so I'm so excited that y'all are here, and I have notes too, just so y'all know, so that's what I'm fumbling with, and I'm going to try and stop. But um, I was going to start out and tell you that I'm really sorry if I say anything that might offend you because I don't want to do that. But, since I'm giving this on Chris's behalf, <laughs> those of you that knew him knew that Chris was a very black or white person. There was no gray area. So, that being said, I'm not going to apologize for anything that I say today. <laughs> and... I've been praying all week that everything I say to you today brings you hope because that's what I got to experience with um, all of this whole story that I get to share with you. Um, I'm honored that I get to do this for Chris and his place because this is something that was a very, very important to him, um, how you can break free of your addiction if you give it to Jesus. And so if you don't get anything else today out of this story, just know that if you will give whatever it is that you are struggling with to Jesus, you will break free. So I'm going to be sharing my story today, and it is about addiction and how it's going to wreck your marriage. And I want you to know that a lot of you just got to experience Chris and I where we were today. So you didn't know the death, much like this plant that I have, I have been trying to keep this plant alive, and it's not going so well. So my marriage used to be in a really wrecked state, but once I surrendered it to God, it was restored to the next kind of plant. That's the same plant, isn't that crazy? It's amazing what a little water and sunshine will do. So, I completely believe in restoration and all things are possible through God. And I'm so thankful for that because I'm going to start out telling you um, a story that's not so pretty, but it gets good in the end. Um, and I say um a lot, and I'm sorry. So um, what is an addiction? Because when we think about addiction, we automatically start to think about alcohol, drugs, gambling, pornography. I mean, they're really out there kind of addictions, right? An addiction, what it really is, is a lying spirit that has made whoever has this believe that they have to have it. It's manifested in many, many different ways. And the alcohol, the drugs, the gambling, the lying, the cheating, those all come from it as a manifestation of it, but it's a lying spirit, and you don't have to hear it. You don't have to believe it. And I'm so thankful that I learned that truth, and I want to share that truth with you today. Um, I'm going to be talking about the one that you know, affected me the most, but there's so many different forms of addiction, and I want to share with you, I'm going to throw out words that, this is a disclaimer, please um, do not nudgingly, lovingly elbow your spouse that you're with if you hear something that you're like, oh, this is for my spouse to hear, because if you're sitting in this chair today, it's for you, it's for you to hear this truth. And so I'm going to throw out some words, and I just want you to be aware of some of the other addiction, addictions that God has been showing me as I've been preparing for all of this. And of course, we have the really obvious ones that will wreck your marriage. We have alcohol, gambling, we've already talked about, drugs and pornography, cutting, eating disorders, gambling, lying. These are all obvious. You see these addictions, and you're like, oh, this is bad and they get really extreme. But what about addictions that are kind of good in the beginning, and so you really don't realize and it's, a, it's an addiction, such as work? It's good to work, right? So how could that be an addiction? Well, if it allows you to neglect your family, then it could be an addiction. What about exercise? Exercise is good. I don't suffer from this addiction, but 
It could be an addiction for some people, and it could be a serious addiction, because if you neglect any other part of your life to do exercise, then it could be an addiction. Cleaning, another one I don't have. Um, OCD, that could be an addiction. Um, what about buying things, spending, and needing material things? <laughs> could that, I said do not lovingly elbow anybody. Could that be an addiction that you have, or that you know somebody that has? Um, what about TV? DVR, bad. Because you can watch way too much TV, and it doesn't start out as an addiction because it's normal, right? Everybody has a TV, so how could this be an addiction, and how could this addiction wreck your marriage? Then we have addictions that aren't so obvious. They're a little more um, hard to detect, and I know because I had a couple of these addictions, but what about control? Do you need to control every aspect of your family's life? Do you control the finances, everybody's schedule, everybody's extracurricular activities? Do you need to have everything in this little box because if it's not, everything's gonna fall apart? What about people? Do you always need somebody with you at all times to feel love or feel valid? What about people pleasing? Remember last week we talked about your priorities, let your yes be yes and your no be no. People pleasing, are you addicted to it? Sickness. Does, do you always get sick? Does somebody in your family always have a condition? Something's always wrong? Is it an addiction that you have? Is it a lying spirit telling you that everybody is always sick? What about status and popularity? Do you have to be somebody in order to be known? With the word status, it also brings me to my other addiction, Facebook. How many of you are sitting on Facebook right now? Are you addicted to Facebook? Are you addicted to everybody knowing your business all day long? Are you addicted to drama? When somebody says, hey, how are you? Girl, you don't know what's going on. And then you go into this long soap opera story? Are you addicted to drama? What about anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, all those things that are normal feelings? Do you harbor those to the point that they're controlling you and that if you didn't have those, you don't know how to function? I know what that feels like, and I want to tell you, you don't have to live in that addiction because you don't have to allow it to wreck your marriage or your life. There's so much more hope than that. All of you have heard our story um, <clears throat> from Chris's point of view, so I'm just going to kind of pick up there. If you haven't heard it, then I really encourage you to go and listen to it on our super cool website that Chris created, and if it's not on there right now, then we'll just have to throw it out on YouTube. It's an awesome story, um, and so I encourage you to go and check it out. But I'm going to start at the point that I had to make a hard decision, and I had to choose to leave Chris. His addiction was wrecking our whole life. And so I made this decision, and at first it was we were separating to head towards divorce because I just couldn't take it anymore. And so I came up here to talk to Todd and Celia because everybody who loves me is telling me, you got to divorce him. He's just, there's no hope for him. Move on. You can do so much better. So I start to hear this worldly advice that's coming from the people who love me. So it's got to be right. Well, I come up here and I talk to Todd and Celia and I lay my ugly story out before them and I tell them all those ugly things that Chris does all the time. And Todd says, well, really, divorce isn't an option. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so guys, I want you to know, I actually left here mad. I was mad at Todd and I was mad at Celia that they could just tell me it's not an option. They didn't know how bad it was. They didn't know these things that he was doing. So I leave offended. Y'all know where that can take us, right? Not somewhere good. But that night, I got home, and after I was dealing with all this anger that I have, I started to realize something. And this is where my story gets to start. In this moment, I realized, like, that I was constantly this nagging wife who always saw the problem in Chris 
And I was so blinded by seeing his problems that I couldn't even see my own addiction that was wrecking my marriage. There's two of us in this marriage, you know? So what is my part? But I, I never went there, never, never. And so that night I was praying and I was asking God, show me what am I supposed to do? Do I divorce him? Do I not? I don't know what to do. And so in this moment, I want you to know that prior to this, all my prayers were the regular, hey, God, help me. Can you make this better? I'll really love you a lot. My prayers were just really for me. And at this moment, my prayer changed. And I said, God, help me because I can't do this anymore. I've done everything that I knew how to do, and I am failing. And that's when something really ugly happened because God said, this is the first time I've ever audibly heard God speak to me, okay? And he said, what about you, Brandis? And I said, what about me? I'm not the one with the addiction. And so, of course, I keep telling God all these things that Chris keeps doing. Of course, like God doesn't know. And so he says it again, what about you? What about me, God? I'm the one here trying to save this. Don't you see? It's not me. And that's where the ugly truth came from. And that's when I realized that it was about me and it was about my addiction and it was about my part in wrecking this marriage. And so in that moment when I handed it all to God and I said, here, show me, he did a lot of things. He showed me that I was controlling that I was controlling Chris so that he couldn't hurt me. I was con trying to control his addiction so that it didn't hurt me. I was controlling everything to the point that I was so dependent on Chris that I couldn't function outside of Chris's addiction. So really when you say that, who's the one with the addiction problem? So I'm relying on him to find my identity. So God started showing me all of these things and it got really ugly. But in that moment, I was able to take that and say, God, I have all these problems, and I'm sorry for always pointing the finger at Chris. Please forgive me. Allow Chris to forgive me and show me how to turn this around. And he did. I want you to know I had to start making some new choices. In order not to be the stumbling block for my husband, I had to start making some choices for myself, which is where I heard this first verse, and I just wanted to read it to you really quick. It's in 1 Peter. It says, Wives, in the same way, submit yourselves to your own husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives when they see the purity and the reverence of your lives. And I said, okay, God, I don't know exactly what that means, but he showed me. And I had to start making some choices. I stopped going to the bar because my husband had an addiction. The bar's not a bad place, really, right? The world, they all go there. It's the cool place to hang out. But it was a stumbling block for my husband, so I stopped. The restaurants that served alcohol, well, they have really good food, right? Well, they had alcohol. My husband didn't need to go there, so I stopped going there. The parties, that just meant I didn't need to go. And of course, I lost a lot of friends in the beginning, but I had to realize, and God showed me, it wasn't the world's standards that I was gonna be measured up to, it was God's standard. So am I gonna honor his standard, or am I gonna let everybody else wreck my marriage because I'm worried about their standards? So we stopped all these things, and slowly my husband started to see these things, and he's starting to wonder, what's going on with her? What is all of this? What does this mean? And so I'm so thankful that when you go and you hear his testimony, you'll hear that he completely, through my example of not being the nagging, controlling wife that I was, he was able to find God all on his own. And that relationship grew into something so beautiful that I am so thankful for. So I want you to know that the marriage that you saw, that a lot of you knew, wasn't where we started. 
But it's because I didn't allow the world to tell me what I should do with my marriage. I let God show me what to do with it. And he took it from a dead place, and he restored it to something so beautiful. He took all of those hurts and those pains that had been caused by our addictions, he took those and he polished them. And he took those scars and he made them disappear. Never again would I pull up all of that old baggage out of, you know, our trunk full of junk. Never again would I pull it out in a fight and say, yeah, what about this? Remember this? You did this. I didn't have to because God took care of it. And so I'm so thankful that he did that because then I was able to take a huge step back and allow my husband to be the spiritual leader of my home. I was able to trust him. I was able to trust him with our children and with all the other things that God was putting before him that were meant for Chris to do. I was able to let him do those things because I didn't have an addiction anymore. And now I can walk freely and happily knowing the marriage that I had is all because of my God and he wanted it to be so beautiful so that you could see that no matter where you're at, it is not hopeless. It is not over. Who cares what the world is telling you? It isn't over. Who cares if you've already got the divorce papers in the mail? It doesn't mean it's over. You can make a choice today to allow God to come completely into your marriage. And I'm not talking about halfway, like, oh, this is kind of good. Let's see what kind of good things. I'm talking you step over that line and you say, God, take it all. Fix it all. Show me my all of my weaknesses. And he will, and he'll restore that marriage just like he restored mine. So that's pretty much our story, and I'm trying to watch the time, and I just want you to know If you leave here with anything today, just leave here knowing that you have a choice, that you're able to stand back and say, what is my part in this wrecked marriage? So that you can take the stand to say, I'm ready to do my part. It's not gonna be easy, but he doesn't promise us that it will be easy. He just promises that it's gonna be good. Thank you. Wow, that was amazing, yes? <laughs> Thank you, Miss Brandis, so much for sharing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brandis. You know, God, Todd said a couple of past two weeks there are two paths. There's one that the world uses that's really huge, and everybody can jump onto it. And then there's God's path, and it's really small, and it's narrow. But if you get on that one, you've never seen what will happen. Amen? And I think that's what she's saying. She took, she chose God's path. And if anybody in here who knew Chris, he chose God's path. And when he actually chose, he didn't look back. That's right. (laughs) He didn't look back. He jumped on and went, and it was awesome. I want to thank you guys for coming out today, and I just want to remind you, next week is Easter, so go ahead and gear up for Easter and and, uh, get ready. Our tithes and offerings, you can drop them at the baskets at the doors on your way out. Put your cards in there as well. So just one more hand for Brandis. That was so awesome. (laughs) She's so good. (laughs) Such a good speaker. If you'll stand with me, I'm going to pray, and we'll dismiss. Lord, thank you so much for such an awesome word from such an awesome lady today. She was so bold, so full of courage. Just come out here and tell what you did. Lord, we honor you. We praise you. Lord, we thank you for what you did in that marriage, for what you did in my marriage, for what you have done in so many other people's marriages. And God, I know that there's hope. There's hope in this room for those with addictions, God, to not believe that lie anymore, to step over the line and just give it all to you and it be no more. We love